Monero Core GUI for Linux. If you go to getmonero.org, you'll see the latest news, December 22nd, Monero Core GUI Beta 1 released. Click on that link and that will take you to a page where you can download Monero Core for your operating system. You can see they have Windows 64-bit, Mac OS 64-bit, Linux 64-bit, Linux 32-bit. I'll be downloading the 64-bit version. So I'm going to click on the 64-bit link. And instead of saving that file, I've already got it downloaded, so I'll cancel that. I'll go back a page, and you can see you can also download the latest blockchain, which if you want to import a blockchain instead of building it from scratch, you can download that. But I've already got mine backed up from a previous installation, so I'm going to be using that instead of syncing it from scratch. So I'm going to minimize that window and I'll extract the Monero GUI Linux archive. Now it's extracted. I'm going to hit Control H so I can see my database. And I'm going to cut those files and then paste them into my home folder. So you can see the .bit Monero, that's where my database is. You can see that it's over 9 gigabytes, so make sure that you have extra space for the database on your installation. I'll go back and then hit Control H to hide the files again, and I'll go into the GUI folder. In this folder, you'll see a start GUI.sh file. If I double click on that, it just brings up gedit, so I'll close that, and I'm going to go up to Files, Edit, Preferences, and Behavior, and I'm going to change it to either Run Executable or Ask Each Time. I'm going to use Ask Each Time. Close File Preferences, then I'll double click on it. When I run it, nothing happens. When I run it in the terminal, you'll quickly see some errors. So I'm going to open a terminal and then run it in the terminal so we can see the error. I'll type in dot backslash start dash GUI dot sh. Hit enter. This will start it, but you can see there's a libgl error. So what I need to do is I need to move a file out of the libs folder. I'm going to type in mv space libs backslash lib big g big l dot so dot one star space dot and then hit enter. That'll move the file out for me. And now when I double click on it and run it, it will open up my wallet. You can see create a new wallet, restore wallet from 25 word mnemonic seed, and open a wallet from file. You can also change the daemon address to a remote server, but I'm going to leave it on local server. So I'll click on create a new wallet. This brings up my username, my wallet name, and my 25 word mnemonic seed. I'm going to change my username to cryptomind underscore test. Under the seed it says, this seed is very important to write down and keep secret. It is all you need to back up and restore your wallet. So make sure you write down the 25 word mnemonic seed on a piece of paper off the computer. It's best not to store this on your computer. What I do is I actually take a photo of it and I store that photo in a few safe places. I'll click on the next arrow and that brings me to a password page where I have to pick and confirm my password. So I'm going to type in a password. You want your password to be as strong as it can be, so try and get it to the high setting. I'm just going to use a medium password for this test. Make sure that you write down this password somewhere safe also. It's best also to keep this off your computer. If you forget this password, you're going to need the mnemonic seed to restore your wallet. So I'm going to click next. Everything looks good. I'll click on use Monero. Now it says the daemon doesn't appear to be running, so I'm going to click on start daemon. Remember I've copied over my database already from an existing database, so my database will sync very quickly, my daemon will sync very quickly with the network. Yours may sync from scratch when you do this, so it'll take a long time to sync. You might have to leave it running for hours, overnight, for a long period of time to get it synced up. Otherwise you can try and import the downloaded blockchain if you decided to download the blockchain to sync. The daemon sometimes does take a while to start up, so just be patient, it will start up. There we go, the daemon is connected. You can see it is synchronizing at the bottom. And now it's synchronized. It says connected. I'm ready to go, the wallet is ready to use. So I'll go ahead, I'm just going to open up a text file that has a My Monero address in it, just to use as an example. I'll copy that address.
And the first page in the GUI wallet is the send page. So I'm going to copy in the address where it says addresses. I can type in an amount to send if I had some Monero. There's transaction priority, low, medium, high. This is how long it would take your transaction to process on the network. You probably only need to use low right now because the network is fairly quick. You shouldn't need to use medium or high. Low should still be fast. The next setting is the privacy level. The privacy sliding bar allows you to choose the level of mix-in that you want to use. The GUI wallet presets represent the following mix-in values. Low equals 4, medium equals 8, high equals 25. You can enter a payment ID if it's necessary for your transaction, and you can enter in a description. So I'm going to type in sending XMR. There's also a sweep unmixable option. If you've been using Monero for a long time, then you might need to use it to collect up some dust. But if you're new, RCT should avoid that. You shouldn't need to use it, so don't worry about it. The next tab is the address book tab. Here we can save addresses that we want to send to. So I'm going to paste in my address, type in a description, my Monero, hit add, and that'll save this address into my address book so I can use it in the future to easily send transactions from that address. Next is the receive tab. Here you'll find your wallet address, your integrated address, your payment ID, which you can change by clicking on generate. You can see it changes the QR code. You can type in an amount, and again, you can see the QR code changes accordingly. There's also a tracking option. So if I click on help, it says this is a simple sales tracker. Click generate to create a random payment ID for a new customer. Let your customer scan that QR code to make a payment. If that customer has software which supports QR code scanning. This page will automatically scan the blockchain and the TX pool for incoming transactions using this QR code. If you input an amount, it will also check that incoming transactions total up to that amount. It is up to you whether to accept unconfirmed transactions or not. It is likely they'll be confirmed in short order, but there is still a possibility they might not. So for larger values, you may want to wait for one or more confirmation. Next is the History tab. Here you can search your transactions. You can pick a date, to and from. Filter your transactions by these dates. You can search by payment ID, date, block height, amount. And with advanced filtering, you can search the type of transaction, all, sent, or received, and choose the amount, to and from. Next is the advanced tab. Under this tab, we'll see check payment and sign verify. Under check payment, we can see that it says verify that a third party has made a payment by supplying the recipient address, the transaction ID, the secret transaction key supplied by the sender. If a payment had several transactions, then each must be checked and the result combined. If we click on the sign verify tab, we can see that we can sign a message or file contents with your address. So I'll go back to receive and copy my wallet address. I'll type in a message. This wallet is awesome! Exclamation. I'll click on sign. And this will give me a signature that signs that message. Now if I send this message to someone, they can verify that it's come from me, from my wallet. They can type in the message in their wallet, paste in the signature code and my wallet address, and verify that it is signed. You can do the same with a file. I'll just select a file, the libgl, so.1, sign it, take that key, paste it into the verify message section, find that same file, and verify it. And it says this is a good signature. Next is the Settings tab. Here you can see your mnemonic seed. Click on Show Seed. Type in your wallet password. Click OK and it will show you your seed just in case if you need to write it down again. You can change the daemon address to a remote address. You can click on Close Wallet which will bring up that initial start screen where you can choose to create a new wallet, restore a wallet from the 25 mnemonic seed, or restore a wallet from a file. Next are the daemon settings. You can start the daemon here, stop the daemon, and show the log. We'll take a quick look at the log. If it is synchronizing, you'll see the blocks actually synchronizing in this log here. It's a really nice wallet. It looks really great, and it's safer to store your Monero in this wallet than on my Monero. 
or on an exchange. So I hope you enjoy using it. I hope you like this video. I hope it helped. And thanks for watching.